Um, I had questions about the uh, venture capital uh, portion, but you've, Mr. Biddle, done a very good job of explaining uh, the role that, that organizations like yourself play in uh, not only um, the grant participants in the SBR program, but I think in, in the entrepreneurial community in our country. And um, I would say that that's an important role given all of the talk around this campus about stimulating the economy. And since 60% uh, of American citizens get their paycheck from a small business, it seems that this committee and our work and the folks that we look out for are uh, important always, but especially now as we try and stimulate the economy. And so I think programs like SBR are, um, again, always justified, but I think especially so. That's why I want to make sure that um, the reauthorization and the language in here is exactly what needs to happen. Um, and there was some discussion about needing to increase the grants. Um, I believe in that. It's a portion of the language that I've brought forward. And in the draft form that we have now, uh, the uh, phase one grants would include, uh, increase from 100,000 to a quarter million. And then the phase two grants would go up to two million. And I just want to give each one of you the opportunity that wish to comment on that and whether or not you think those are sufficient levels or if you think uh, a, a, another, another figure or a different level, obviously, you know, the sky is the limit. But realistically, what do you think are appropriate amounts? Uh, given there's been quite a, a lapse in uh, updating these figures since 2000, obviously, uh, time value of money has some effect on what $100,000 would get you in terms of uh, research and development. So, uh, Mr. Biddle? I, uh, I don't think the, the size of the program needs to be increased. I think the program can be made more effective. I think that uh, increasing the grant size is important to, to make the grants worth the effort. Because what you're trying to do here is discover things, but you're also trying to, to co-opt people to think about government applications, things that, that could be useful. I think the most important change, uh, aside from the grant size, is, is taking a percentage of this money to manage the programs within the departments. I mean, you won't want to hear this, but in a, in a lot of these agencies, this is viewed as a congressional tax, and they pay the tax and go back to work. So a lot of this money is not well spent, and it's not managed by the real customers. I mean, the gold standard in the, in the military is the submarine program. The program executive, the guy who builds submarines, owns the SBR program. And he uses it as a discovery tool and a tool to go and find talent to solve his problems. But in most of the government, it's down in the basement. They publish broad area announcements to the usual suspects and doesn't get acted on. So I think that you know, taking 2 or 3% so they can put talent around this money and bring it closer to the internal customers is, uh, is as important as increasing the fund size. Very good. Mr. Hernandez? Just make a comment on the size. Uh, my father used to have this old saying that uh, too much money makes people lazy. So I'm not an advocate for too much money in these programs. Uh, that being said, we're a very capital intensive uh, industry, at least the biotechnology industry is. Uh, we don't believe that the $100,000 is the right size. It doesn't, again, it takes so much time to write these things. And, and I'd rather have my scientists focus on other things than a $100,000 effort. So I think the 250 uh, feels right. Um, the 2 million on phase two is definitely, I think, the right number. Um, I would argue that there are other mechanisms that allow one to, for example, fast track these programs to really combine them so that there's no gap in funding in between phase one and phase two. I think that would be a really important uh, element to look at. And again, you gotta remember these grants, these fundings uh, can be used to leverage additional capital, additional private capital, so it really, allows us to be able to do that by, again, validating the technology and the approach in some regard. So the number sounds right. Um, I would ask for more, but again, I think, uh, I think it, uh, we want to make sure we manage it and get really the private sector involved as well. Okay. Yeah, we like the size uh, that you all have designated, 250 and 2 million seems appropriate for us. Uh, we do believe, though, that the overall monies aggregated here should be larger. And as I said, I suggested 5% of overall R&D we think is appropriate for these smaller companies. We like that 90-day turnaround also. I agree with you. And I think we want to see better data collection as the program goes forward so we're all clear about the steps toward utilization in state commercialization. And some of that undoubtedly would mean better administration of the agency's programs. I think uh, 
the the burden of the application, the time it takes to secure the grant award, uh, which often also entails you know hiring an outside uh, advisor or consultant to uh, assist with the application, uh, diminishes the value of the of the grant, and I think that in part has led to the drop off uh, of the applications, particularly in the medical technology industry that uh, uh, Mr. Leahy referred to. And if I could just uh, follow up on, on two comments that were made, I think a, a two to three percent set aside again to help uh, with the administration and really implementation. I think that would help achieve the objective of commercialization and then also addressing this issue of timing. We actually had our annual meeting here in D.C. Uh, over the past few days, had about 150 CEOs of small medical device companies came in and uh, chatted with one of them. and. You know, they talked about the valley of death even within the SBIR program because the gaps between phase one and phase two. And, and although, um, you know, there are goals out there which they're supposed to achieve to respond in time, uh, sometimes there is a significant lag. And so I think some of the timelines in the bill are certainly helpful, but if there's any additional oversight mechanisms that are in place to help ensure that companies aren't uh, sitting on the sidelines waiting uh, for uh, phase two grants would certainly be a welcomed uh, improvement. I agree. Uh, the length, the the, um, uh, the the bill that we're putting forward, or the language that that we're submitting, actually allows for fast track authority within each of the agencies that would basically allow uh, simultaneously for them to issue a phase one and a phase two grant to the same company or to the same uh, venture. So hopefully that, uh, and I would encourage you to take a look at it and get back to me or the committee if you think there needs to be further improvements, but I think it speaks to the concerns that all of you have raised.